Welcome to the Bentley Systems training course where you will learn how to design truss or tubular connections in RAM connection standalone. In RAM connection standalone, you can define K style, Y style, or X style joints according to the configurations that you see on your screen. In this particular video, we're going to be focusing on a couple of K joints that we already have defined in RAM connection standalone. We will now turn our attention to our RAM connection standalone application. And as you can see, I have two different K style joints that I have available in my sample model. We're going to be designing a truss or tubular style connection for each of these joints. And while we do that process, we're going to play around with some of the extra configurations or reinforcement options that are available for K style joints. So let's start with joint number one in our particular model. When I'm ready to start my connection design workflow, I can go to the design tab of the ribbon toolbar, click on the assign option, find tubular connections, and then select the CHB option. Here you can see that RAM connection standalone was successful in assigning a connection to this particular joint. So let's go ahead and click on the close icon. Now the first thing I'm going to do after the connection assignment is take a look at my joint selection area where I'm going to be able to see the status of my connection design. Here I can see that my status is indicated in yellow, meaning that it did pass the code check, but some warnings were encountered through the connection design process. So at this point, I'm going to choose to edit this connection manually to see if I can get to a passing connection design. To do that process, I'm going to select the Design tab of the Ribbon Toolbar, click on the Edit icon, and then select Edit My Truss Connection. Now once we get into the Connection Pad, we can modify some of the parameters, we can review the calculations and results, and also export a DXF. Now within the connection pad, I'm going to notice that in the ribbon, all the way over on the right hand side, the status of my connection design is going to be indicated. And again, I do have a warning on this particular join. Now, if I wanted some additional information regarding the calculations for this joint, I can click on the results icon to see the steel connection report. Now here what I'm going to see is that a gap ratio is basically less than the minimum recommended value, which is what yielded the warning for this particular model. So let's go ahead and take a look at the gap information that's available to be modified through this process. So here I'm going to take a look in the members area. I'm going to notice that the top adjacent branch configuration has two different options available here. So the default is to go with a gapped option or I can also select an overlapped option. As you can see, immediately it did have an effect on my calculation. Now for some more information, I'm able to see the help window. If you don't see this window in the bottom right hand corner of your screen, make sure your help icon is turned on and you can see some additional information regarding the configurations that can be affected with this particular field that is active. So I've entered my gapped area. You can see here that that adjusted the geometry here, and then I can change this gap information. I'm going to go with 3.78 inches. As you can see, I've made that adjustment, and now I'm into a position where I am in a passing connection design. It is indicated in green, which means I passed all code checks with no warnings. So let's go ahead and also take a look at the DXF view of this joint, and then of course you can see the changes that I made to be reflected in this drawing. This drawing can be adjusted for the font size and layers, and it can also be exported as a DXF to be inserted into your detailing drawings. Now at this point, I'm happy with the changes I've made. So I'm going to click on the Save icon, and then I'm going to exit out of the connection pad. And you can see that my status has been updated. Let's go ahead and move on to joint number two, which is fairly similar to the joint we just designed. Again, I'm going to start my workflow by clicking on the Assign option. 
I'm going to go to the tubular connections and then select CHB. A connection was assigned and I'm going to go ahead and click close. Now if I take a look in the joint selection area, this time I don't just have a warning, I have an error on the connection design. I did violate the minimum interaction ratio, which for my model is set at 1.0. So I do need to make some changes. So let's go to the design tab in the ribbon toolbar, click on the edit icon, and then I'm going to go to the truss connection option. Now if I were to take a look in the steel connection report, let's go ahead and scroll on down to gain some additional information or insight. Here I can see that the cord wall plastification is currently failing. That's giving me my largest interaction ratio. And if I scroll on down, I can see the rest of the results. Now, if I wanted some additional information regarding the calculations that were performed, I can also click on this view formulas icon. And here I'd be able to see all of the variables and equations that were used to arrive at these results. But I already know that my cord wall is having an issue. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and scroll down. And what I'm also going to find for K-style joints, and this is particular for K-style joints with square or rectangular cords in them, I am able to add some reinforcement. So let's go ahead and select this option. And we can see I have two different types. I can go with a flange reinforcement, which basically puts a plate here. You can adjust the size of the plate once you specify it. Or you can also go with a side reinforcement option. So for this particular model, I'm going to go with a flange reinforcement. And let me go ahead and customize some of these options for my standards. I'm going to go ahead and select the material as A36 from the United States database. And I'm going to adjust the size so my plate, let's go ahead and scroll on around, is actually bigger than these welds. So let's go ahead and make this a little bit larger. I'm going to go with an 18 inch. Let me increase the width to say five and a half inches. So I'm going to go ahead and pull that on out and I'm going to go with a thicker plate. Now just making those changes, I can see that that significantly reduced my interaction ratio, but I am still getting a warning on this particular connection. So I'm going to return to this top adjacent branch configuration. I'm going to go with gapped, but I'm going to increase this gap. And again, if you weren't sure which parameters would help get you to a passing connection, you can always return to your steel connection report at any time to get some additional information. Now at this point, I passed all code check requirements. My interaction ratio is less than 1.0 and it is in green, meaning that I have passed the code check. Let's go ahead and save our changes and then we can exit out of the connection pad. Now, several different type of truss joints do allow for some type of reinforcement, but that's usually, or that is only available for your cord sections that are square or rectangular. Obviously, round cord sections would not allow reinforcement to be added. Now, at this point, this concludes my process for assigning a truss or tubular connection to a K-style joint in RAM connection standalone. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.